What's up guys and welcome to a Wizard's Lizard. This is a game that comes out today on their website. It isn't out on Steam or I do not think the Sura either, but um, it's available on their website in the link in the description for $12. It's a lot like Binding of Isaac and Nintendo took their own take on Binding of Isaac. A Wizard's Lizard would be really similar to what it'd be. But we're gonna hop in here and I don't know, like, it's still in Steam Greenlight, so if you want to check it out there, I suggest you do give it an upvote if you enjoy this video on it. And it made its way through Kickstarter as Crypt Run, but, um, we're into the game now, and you can see that there's a shop, and the shop, you know, you can buy things from there right away, and you can just start off your game good if you have enough money. In here we have Spelunky-type doors, where you can unlock these, and they'll bring you to a later part in the game. But I haven't gotten to unlocking them yet. But the game's a lot like Binding of Isaac, you'll see right away, we have WASD to move and the arrow keys to shoot things. And, like I said, it's a lot like Binding of Isaac in nature, but it does have some differences to it, and it's overall really enjoyable so far. It's very, very difficult, though. I've had a hard time playing through it just in general and getting much progress in it. I'd say it's even a little harder than Binding of Isaac so far. Mostly just because of how the items work, it doesn't really seem to give me too many items that actually get me on my way. But um, you might be able to see right away, there's actually a pretty nice art style going on to this. It is pretty cool, I enjoy the art style quite a lot. The animations aren't the best thing in the world, but the art style has grown on me quite a bit. But um, basically, you might be able to see these skeletons hanging around here that are just sort of glowing about. They don't really do anything yet. This is the thing that makes them specifically interesting to this game and its mechanics, is that um, once you die, you actually come back. And now the game will be harder, it'll give you a second chance of life, but in return the game is pretty difficult. Um, being dead can actually have a number of per perks, like this key. I cannot get to this key unless I am dead, but it can also be much difficult much more difficult because I have to deal with all the skeletons walking about, and they're not the easiest thing in the world to kill. Now other things that are different from Isaac, you might be able to see that the room itself actually takes up more than one screen. And also on the top left, you might be able to see that there's an inventory. Now the inventory is sort of confusing because of just how it works. Like, I don't know, there's nothing in the game that tells me like how much armor a certain piece of armor gives me. Like, I have, I have, like, a torso, a, like, leather body, and gloves, and it doesn't really tell me how much armor stat I have, or, like, I haven't picked up any level leather gloves or armor bodies that, like, are better than that. It's sort of weird. It's not really straightforward with it all. It's sort of confusing, just because it doesn't tell me any information on it. Sometimes it feels like it's just, like, a cosmetic that doesn't have any cosmetic abilities. And here in the center of the screen, you might be able to see a little bit of a pentagram thing. And if you die, you can get revived there. Now, there are certain puzzles you'll have to solve while you're dead, and certain things that might be easier to accomplish when you're dead, so it might not be the easiest to hop back to being in the land of the living immediately, but it can be useful as you have a second shot if you end up dying. Overall, though, the game is incredibly difficult so far. I've been having just overall a really hard time getting past the first world. And it's like, most of the time is because I never get upgrades. The first time I played it through, I got a really good upgrade that made me shoot two swords at once instead of one. But this time around, I I mean, meant I've played it through like 40, four, four to five other times. And I haven't gotten any type of weapon upgrade. It seems to be very difficult. And here I die, and I'm back to life again, but I'm in the land of dead. You can see things are a lot brighter, it's a lot easier to see, but there's a lot more enemies. You can see the skeleton dudes chasing me now, and they're very fast. Even though they die in one hit, they can be a hassle to deal with. And now everything is targeting me. Another thing that's a lot different from Binding of Isaac is there's a lot, a lot of enemies. It just seems like the game is more focused on a ton of enemies that hoard you instead of strategically taking down a small number of difficult to deal with enemies. I can't say too much on it though, just because I haven't gotten particular fo particu particularly far in the game, excuse me. But yeah, we have a whole bunch of these zombies to deal with. By far, some of the most annoying enemies are, are the owls down here. Because they can just like charge you in an annoying way. And it can just be hard to deal with in many different situations. Why don't we make our way out of this room? 
Oh wait, well, let me actually go down here and get the other torch. It's good to try to get every bit of gold you possibly can, and um... I don't know, it's just like, there's shops, but there's... It doesn't have any type of organization like Binding of Isaac does, where if you're outside of the room, it'll tell you that you're going into a shop, basically, with how the doors are designed and how the minimap will show you. But you don't get any of that here. It's all very vague. You're very in the dark, even if you travel to that place. If I make my way to a shop, it won't tell me on the minimap that that's a shop. It won't even tell me when I'm outside of it that that's a shop. So it's like little things like that that keep me just confused and in the dark most of the time. Most of these great owls are a pain in the butt. By far, one of the most annoying enemies in the game so far. But when it comes to urgency for cash, it really falls under more of Spelunky than it does anything else. Okay, but I am getting pretty low on health. I do have to be careful here to make sure I don't die, because if I die when I'm in the land of the dead, then basically it's game over, and I have to start over from the very beginning again. And it works just like Binding of Isaac in that fact, that if you die, you gotta start from the beginning, and that's just it. Now there's a lot of barrels in here, so I'm guessing the next level, or the next room, will be a boss room. So let me go back and revive myself on the pentagram. It should be right over here, but the problem with it will be that there will be skeletons guarding it. Because I killed some zombies in here earlier. Alright, so now I'm back to being alive. And that's good. Now let's make our way back into that room and break the rest of the barrels. The barrels seem to be giving me a high chance of getting actual, like, health this time around, so I'll make sure to destroy them all. But now it's much, much darker again. That's just, like, a perk to being dead, I guess, is that you get a lot more things you can visually see. Let's destroy this stuff, and it looks like I'm getting some food and getting some gold. That's all good. Hopefully we can run into the shop before we do the boss fight, but if we do run into the boss fight before the shop, we, do, we can't really do anything about it, we just have to kill him. And the boss fight is the same every time, it's gonna be the same boss every single time, which is a little boring, but it's still okay. Um, because in that fact, it's not supposed to- I feel like it's more focused on adventuring than it is random procedural generation sometimes. Or at least it gives that feel, even if it isn't. Just because, you know, you have things like that going on, this specific story that it follows. Let's kill these owls and hopefully we can make our way to a shop, though. Let us see. Nope, a bunch of enemies, and there's a ton of them in here, so I'm gonna have to kite them quite a bit. It can be a little difficult, you know, it's just, you know, we have a huge horde here, we have these new guys that uh, throw shovels at us, I guess they're just grave diggers. And, I don't know, it's just very difficult to deal with this kind of stuff. Right now, I just gotta kite them and throw my sword, which doesn't do that much damage at them and doesn't attack very fast. So I just sort of have to wait it out, and hopefully I get lucky at the shop and get a new attack item. I like to pick up these boots here, but I don't know, I don't want to get hit any more than I have. So I'll just wait it out. It isn't killing me to not have them. I get hit by the shovel there, though, that's not good. Let me try to dodge some of these uh, dirt piles, because if I run into these, the zombies will start walking from the dead. And I don't want that, so what's down here? It is the boss. Zombie Warlord. Now this guy is difficult. His attack and his patterns really aren't that hard to figure out, but they can be hard to dodge. And another thing is just that his health it feels indefinite at times. It's very hard to kill him. It takes absolutely forever. And he spawns a bunch of bad dudes. Like, the first time I played through, I was fortunate enough to get a new weapon upgrade, and it made this, like, so much easier. But without it, it's a very big hassle. So I just need to wait around and just constantly throw my swords at this guy. It is gonna take a while. Hopefully I don't die in the process, though. Let's just try to get some, rid of some of the zombies here if I can't manage that. One thing I didn't understand quite away, right away at the game is that there's a store before the game starts, like it does in Rogue Legacy. But the thing is that's different with Rogue Legacy is that like you don't keep your gold. You don't really hold on to that kind of stuff. So, like, how am I spending this? Like, you know, because the only money I actually get is from the lady. The lady gives me a thousand gold to start with. And I do believe that just escalates the more you play, because she originally only gave me 500. So I'm not sure, like, if I get more blueprints, 
or whatever, because if you get blueprints, then the items, I think more items just get unlocked, maybe that's how? Like, there's, there's a lot the game just doesn't explain, and I can't really blame it, a lot of games in this fashion don't explain things, it's just sort of a figure out for yourself kind of thing, but I don't know, I feel like this one should have had a little bit more explanation, because it had a little bit more mechanics to it. As you can see, this boss isn't even halfway dead. And if we die, then we have to go to the living dead, and it's just, it's gonna be a lot harder. So let's try not to get hit. We're at 9 health, so that might not be that easy. But we'll have to see. He's trying to chase me down now. I got him about half health, and I'm just trying to wail on him right now. It just seems to be the most beneficial thing. Hopefully I can get him in a bit of a loop where I can just constantly attack him and I don't have to worry about getting to the land of the dead. But now I'm in poor health. Oh, great. <laughs> Alright, now he spawned a bunch of enemies. This isn't going to be fun. At least it's easy to dodge his ball when there's a whole bunch of enemies out because he just stays in one place. Alright, let's get rid of these guys. Wait for him to calm down a bit. Alright. The range isn't that satisfying on this thing either. See, that's another thing, there's no spacebar items like there are in Binding of Isaac. We pick up some items, but they never seem to have any specific thing like that where I can, like, use them. Not that they've explained to me. There's also very li limited settings, like I tried just checking out the controls in the options menu to see if maybe there's something I can that'll show me what the controls are, just in case I'm missing something, and it doesn't give me the option to change the controls, so it's like, oh. So, that's another thing, is there's, like, no options menu at all. It's a good thing it's a very low-intensive game. It's not going to melt your computer if you have a low-end PC. Overall, it's very simple. Okay. Now we have all these skeletons chasing us. At least they die in one hit. It's just there are so many of them and they move so fast, it's just so annoying. If I could just get rid of these guys, maybe I could have an easier time with this boss now. It'd be awesome if I could be, like, a little bit stronger when I'm dead, just to deal with all this. Okay, he's gonna try to shoot me, I just barely dodge it. He's almost dead now. If I can just kite him a bit and just keep on successfully hitting him, maybe this will be done soon. There you go, he's almost dead. Oh, dodge that. <laughs> oh, didn't dodge that one quite as much. Oh gosh. Okay, is he gonna he's gonna spawn enemies? I'm just gonna ignore those guys for right now. I'm gonna stay in the center of him if I can so that he just sort of swings around me. Oh gosh, now turn around and kill him. Okay. Oh gosh, taking damage. Almost got him. Swoop in, there we go. Okay, he's almost dead. There we go. Cool. And now that he is dead, we don't get anything for it. I don't know, it doesn't really feel that satisfying. We got nothing for that. But, um, now there's a bunch of <laughs> skeletons I have to deal with in here. But besides this, I think them, let's, hopefully there's a shop to our right. I mean, it would be really nice to get some type of support here, because we get nothing for killing the boss, we get nothing in items besides this armor that I really don't know how much it helps, because it doesn't tell me. But besides that, I mean, we're doing pretty good, we're still alive, and that's the most important thing for me, at least, because it's very hard to be alive for me at this point in the game. But yeah, overall, very difficult game, but it's been fun so far. I've been enjoying playing it. It's just, it seems like it has this specific parts where I could be rewarded or feel like I accomplished something, but I, I just don't, because I don't get any rewards, I don't get any progress, I don't even get any hints to what I'm accomplishing sometimes. Alright, let's kill those guys. And this last bat. Now, I do have this guy over here who I can free, but once again, I free this guy, he'll say thank you for saving me, and that's it. He just disappears, I don't get anything for that, and it just, it confuses me. Now, we do have blueprints in here, but I don't really want any of those. I want to go to this shop, and there's no weapon upgrades. Great. I don't know what either of these things do, but I'll purchase them in a moment after I break this open. Oh, this stupid zombie, get out of here. Okay, now you can do the Spelunky thing and attack the shopkeeper, and I might just do that for the heck of it. Make sure you guys how hard it is, let me get those things, I don't know what they do. I think the one thing will tell me how much damage I'm hitting for, which I don't think that should be 
a cosmetic, I think that should be a option. I mean, I did press the 1 through 10 keyboard on the keyboard just to see if any of them did anything, like gave me any type of ability. This gives me any Venom, like, resistance, but I don't need that. This guy doesn't hit me for anything Venomous. I haven't found anything that hits me for anything Venomous. Maybe I will in the next level if I can survive killing the shopkeeper. But, I don't know, this guy is actually pretty difficult to kill. I mean, he doesn't have a ton of health though, but he has stuff flying all over the place, and I'm dead. Game over. It don't tell me a whole bunch of stats, how much damage I've taken, but why don't we go back to the main menu? So that was a Wizard's Lizard. Like I said, you can find this game on their website for about $12 as of today. And it's on Steam Greenlight. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Check out the links in the description, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.